good morning and welcome to this Monday morning where we are going to share the word of God as we are starting the new theme in a new month, in a new way that God has given us such a new morning so that we may be inspired by his word and above it all that he may teach us to be practical Christian. The theme of the month is becoming a practical Christian and we are going to look at several people from the epistle of John, third letter of John. And we are going to look at the characters he was writing these letters to. We are also going to look at John himself and see uh, what type of a person he was. We are also going to look at the big idea of this uh, book of John or the third epistle of John. Now, it is good to understand that John was writing this letter to a friend and a brother that he loved so much, a brother who was called Gaius. And to begin it all, we are going to read the whole uh, letter so that we may go into step by step of every character in the story. Now, the letter is addressed by the elder. To my dear friend Gaius, whom I love in the truth, dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, just as you are progressing spiritually. It gave me great joy when some believers came and testified about your faithfulness to the truth, telling how you continue to walk in it. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth, dear friend. You are faithful in what you are doing for the brothers and sisters, even though they are strangers to you. They have told the church about your love. Please send them on their way in a manner that honors God. It was for the sake of the name that they went out, receiving no help from the pagans. We ought therefore to show hospitality to such people so that we may work together for the truth. I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to be fast, will not welcome us. So when I come, I will call attention to what he is doing, spreading malicious nonsense about us. Not satisfied with that, he even refuses to welcome other believers. He also stops those who want to do so and puts them out of the church. Dear friends, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. Anyone who does what is good is from God. Anyone who does what is evil has not seen God. Demetrius is well spoken of by everyone, and even by the truth itself we also speak well of him. And you know that our testimony is true. I have much to write to you, but I do not want to do so with pen and ink. I hope to see you soon, and I will talk face to face. Peace to you, the friends here send their greetings. Greet the friends there by the name. Now the epistle that John was writing, he was encouraging fellowship with the Christian brothers, following his expression of love for Gaius. John was assuring Gaius of his prayers for his health and voices his joy over Gaius' persistent walk in truth and for the manner in which he shows hospitality and support for the missionaries who had come to his church. So Gaius was a leader in the church, and John is happy about how he is doing the work and also how hospitable he is to the missionaries that John was sending to him, and he is very, very appreciative. He says his joy is overwhelming. He is so much happy about the behavior of Gaius. John is also uh, writing the same way concerning another person in the same church who is called Diotrephes. His heart is, uh, as the writer is saying, far from that of Gaius. It is uh, removed or very far away from the behavior of Gaius because he is um, no longer living in love. This man is proud and he wants to take precedence of everything or he wants to be fast in all situations. 
he has refused the, uh, to read the letters that John has written to the church because he is fearing that his authority might be superseded by the Apostle John. So he is like fighting for that a leadership post. He is not ready to work as a team and he's such a proud man. John is not happy about the evil that this man is doing and also how he's refusing to welcome the missionaries in the church. And so he's disappointed and he's saying once he will get there, he will talk openly about his behavior because he's disobedient, he's negative and he's keeping on encouraging guys not to copy anything from him. He's also mentioning uh, a little on another man called Demetrius, and he's talking about that he has heard of his good testimony, and he's also telling guys that he should uh, take note of this. He should imitate Demetrius. He should, uh, uh, Demetrius should be the role model to Gaius who John is writing to about this letter. So he's saying that Demetrius is widely known because of his good character. He is royal, he is truthful, and John is commending him to Gaius. He wants Gaius to take him as an example. Now, before we even go to these characters that John is mentioning, it is good we bring to our notice who John was because this will help us now to understand why is he writing, how can he be writing to the church, and we do not understand who he is. The writer is John himself. John was the youngest apostle of Jesus or disciple of Jesus when Jesus was still living. He writes this letter very many years after Jesus had died and had ascended to heaven. He uh, himself was uh, related to Jesus. He was in the inner circle of Jesus when uh, Jesus was still on earth as a very young disciple. And in many instances in the Bible, he is referred to as the beloved disciple. Jesus loved him so much. We have evidences as to where he is found in the inner circles of Jesus. Evidence one is during transfiguration, when the Bible records that Jesus called the three and went to them on the Mount of Transfiguration. And these are James, John, and Peter. So we find Peter uh, or jo uh, John was among the three at the mountain of transfiguration. Another evidence is in John 13 and verse 23, where it is said that he was leaning on the blossom of Jesus um, when he was speaking about somebody would betray him. When Jesus was talking about his betrayal, John was there and it is recorded, the beloved disciple was leaning on the bosom of Jesus as he was speaking. It is also recorded that he was with Jesus when he was agonizing at the Garden of Gethsemane. And John uh, himself writes and says, the beloved disciples was there. Uh, it is in tradition of the Jewish not to mention themselves by name. And that is why he himself is referring to himself, the beloved disciple was there. Unlike us today, most of us would like to say, I was there. I was the one with Jesus. I was the one with him and trying to show uh, the crowd that you were with Jesus, but not John. John would refer that disciple who Jesus loved was there at Gethsemane. That disciple who Jesus loved was there when Jesus was raising Jairus' daughter. That disciple who was beloved by Jesus was there when he was healing uh, uh, Peter's mother-in-law. So we find that this disciple was also there when Jesus was at the verge of dying on Calvary. And that is when Jesus gave him the responsibility of taking care of his mother. So we find that this John who had a very close relationship with Jesus himself, and not only the relationship at work or at Jesus' ministry, when we go back to history, we find that her mother, or his mother, or John's mother, 
was called Salome. And the Bible records she was the stepsister of the Virgin Mary, mother of Jesus. Now this brings us to know that they were also related by, uh, or they were family members. So we find John, the writer of this epistle, was a very close person to Jesus himself. And when he is writing this letter, he has the authority because he has been with Jesus. He has stayed very many years. In fact, among all the 12, it is him who lived longest. As the others were persecuted and killed, John lived the longest uh, after the death of the other apostles. Now, we find that in the public ministry of Jesus, John was there and he has uh, he had a good relationship with Jesus and at the hour of death Jesus entrusted John with the mother that is found in John 19 in verse 25 to 27 now history has it that John remained a celibate he continued with a life of prayer commitment to the work of God fasting for the kingdom of God and he was also taking care of the mother of Jesus together with his own mother and other family members. So this man, John, had the apostolic authority even to write the letter. Now we are going to look at why did he write? What pushed him so much to come up with this letter? And as Christians, what practical lesson can we learn from this epistle of John? The practical uh, lesson from the book or from the letter that he was writing. When we want to become practical Christians, then we need to look at the teachings from this uh, uh, epistle. So let's go with me even in the coming devotion and see what can we learn? What can we acquire? What can we imitate? What can we get from this uh, epistle? of John. Remember we've said when he was writing, he was referring to himself as an elder. But when he was Jesus, it is referred the youngest disciple. It is because of the duration from the time he was with Jesus until to coming of uh, writing of this epistle. This elder had authority. This elder had apostolic authority. And we shall see in the next uh, devotion, what can we learn? from John, in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.